Stephen A. Smith, uh, what do you think about Richard Sherman's press hour there? It's interesting because I know that there are people that are going to, to, to really be uh, taken aback and turned off by what Richard Sherman did yesterday with Doug Baldwin. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was brilliant on his part. And I think that Richard Sherman has to be careful, however, because he could end up being the NFL's worst nightmare. And the NFL, in all likelihood, may retaliate in some form or fashion. Richard Sherman pointed out a level of hypocrisy, as far as I'm concerned, that many of us have lamented for quite some time when it comes to the National Football League. Now, to be fair, watching Mike and Mike this morning with my man Ryan Rucco filling in for Mike Greenberg, Rucco did point out accurately, I might add, uh, that players get approximately, I think it's like 45% of merchandise sales or, or what have you. Um, he's right about that. He would know. But the reality is, is that's not the point Richard Sherman was making. Richard Sherman was making a point about inconsistencies. He was making a point about the fact that the NFL can sit there and so quickly talk about player safeties, but have them playing games five days apart when the players and the, le and, and, and the coaches and everybody have repeatedly told them that's just unsafe circumstances for them to play under. Uh, they talk about, you know, they, they want you promoting their products, but not the, your own. That's fair enough, but the flip side to it is that, you know, when, when they'll sit there and talk about, well, you know what, guys shouldn't be drinking and driving, guys shouldn't be doing this with alcohol or whatever, but one of your biggest sponsors is the beer companies. And so when you look at it, and, and then when you look at players getting fined for mistakes they may have made, well, did Roger Goodell find himself for the, uh, for the, for the, mayor, for the mayor couples or the, or the faux pas that he uh, performed with the whole Ray Rice a domestic abuse scandal. Roger Goodell, some would argue, should have penalized himself to some capacity. I'm not of the mindset that he should have been dismissed, that he should have been fired or anything like that. And I've been on the record saying that. But considering how quick you are to reprimand others for making mistakes or, or, or doing things wrong, Roger Goodell did nothing to himself. So when you look at it from that perspective, uh, and a player like Richard Sherman pointing it out, I think it resonates because this is a young brother who has a level of brilliance about him. He's not some guy that's going to speak haywire, not know what he's talking about most of the time and all this stuff. He's a highly intelligent individual, and the person that was standing next to him is Doug Baldwin. We constantly talk about these big institutions, you know, of higher learning. Well, Stanford is elite, and they are both from Stanford. These are not idiots. They know what they're doing. And I would take them seriously if I'm the NFL, even though I'm not sure that will benefit Doug Baldwin and Richard Sherman in the end. I still say that I give them credit where credit is due. They made some valid points to me. I hear some of what you're saying. I like some of what Richard Sherman said. But in the big picture, Stephen A., I didn't love it because... In the past, Richard Sherman, to me, has been very clever and insightful in just about everything he said and did. This one, I didn't really get. And let, let me start off with the cardboard cutout of Doug Baldwin with Doug down behind it playing puppeteer. Can you explain that one to me? I, I, that, I, you know, again, maybe it just went over my head. Maybe I'm not bright enough to, to figure it out. But did, did you get the cardboard cutout of Doug Baldwin? Yeah, he was, he was basically pointing out how players in the NFL are puppets to the NFL. That's what he was saying. Puppets, okay. All right, let's start with the $100,000 fine that they wanted to parody and make fun of and scoff at. I, I believe you and I both think that players should be fined for not speaking to the media because... That is they're partners with the National Football League, and, and the, the NFL relies on its players to speak to the media to promote the game of football. So are we good with that? Are we both on the no, same the, page? No, no that, dispute that there. We are, we are on the same page on that point, yes. Okay. Now, let's look at the bigger picture. Has anyone this side of Peyton Manning benefited more in the offseason from commercial making than Richard Sherman did this past offseason. I cannot turn on my TV without seeing yet another Richard Sherman commercial. He, he got a big slice of the pie, right? 
Yes, he did. I would know. I did one commercial okay. with him. You did one with him. Thank you very much. Okay, God bless him. And you know that I am always pro-player here. I want the players to get as much as they can get. Correct. But they have to realize they are all playing on the greatest stage in American sports, the National Football League. Ratings are through the roof. So this great stage allows them to use it as a launching pad to promote themselves as Richard so beautifully did all last year and he backed it up on the field by making the game-saving play against the 49ers in the NFC Championship game and helping Seattle win the Super Bowl and he benefited hugely through the offseason. Okay? He has to appreciate the stage he's playing on unless he thinks that the NFL is so hypocritical, Stephen A. Smith, that you want to break away, you want to secede. I always say this to the NBA players. Then go start your own league. If you don't like the rules, next CBA, strike, break, secede, start over. Because I think Richard is not, well, what he's doing is he's biting the hand that does feed him pretty well. And to your point, 45% of the endorsement money that the NFL gets off their official sponsors goes into the salary cap. So Richard's getting that money back. And he's also double dipping because when Bose is the official sponsor of the National Football League, his headphones, then Richard gets to double dip by getting paid to promote Beats. He double dips because Campbell's Chunky Soup is a, uh, an official sponsor of the National Football League, and Richard is the official spokesman for Campbell's Soup. So well, he's double dipping twice there. Well, well again, he, he ought to... He ought to be thankful for a lot of that to me Skip and, and not, not do a parody of it, not make well, fun Skip, of it. Skip, if you want to say he shouldn't do a parody of it, fine. Um, I respect the hell out of my guy, Ryan Rucco, and I heard his position this morning on Mike and Mike along with Mike Golick, who I respect as well. But allow me to, begin to, to, to elocute a different perspective. I did not hear Richard Sherman go up there and complain about his money. I did not hear Richard Sherman go up there and say, you know what, we're like, like, like some of these idiots have said in the past, we're like slaves and all of this other stuff. No, I did not hear Richard Sherman say that. I heard Richard Sherman point to the hypocrisy of the NFL. You got yep. a problem with alcohol, but that's a sponsor. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You got a problem with okay. guys making mistakes, but you don't Good. make a mistake. So, so that's what he's saying. He's not complaining about his money. He's not complaining about the absence of opportunities. He's complaining about the power that's wielded over these players, how sometimes the actions that are partaken by the, the Roger Cadell, the commissioner, and the National Football League comes across as somewhat hypocritical. Not only that. That. Let's also take this into consideration, Skip Bayless. We work at ESPN. It's the worldwide leader. I'm here to tell y'all something right now. Anybody ask me when I give my lectures, carry, skip, anywhere I go, I would tell you in a heartbeat, it's a great place to work. I'm a lucky person. I'm incredibly benefiting from the platform that I have, and I'm honored to be a part of ESPN, ABC, and the Walt Disney family. But it's not perfect. And the fact of the matter is, is that if I come to work and I have a complaint about something, that doesn't mean that the employer is horrible and I hate my job. Why is it that I have to like everything about the job just because I appreciate where I'm at? You can appreciate where you are, by and large, love coming to work every day and doing what you do, but on occasion having a problem. Or an issue, whether it be with the company or the entity and brand you work for or a particular boss, supervisor, etc., that you may not like in terms of the heavy hand they bring down upon you. It doesn't stop you from respecting, admiring, and, 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 and looking forward to working for an individual or the entity that you work for. It just simply means that you have a problem. You don't parody it so you can make that argument because if you feel that way, you shouldn't go as far as Doug Baldwin and Richard Sherman went yesterday. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that what they said, number one, was wrong, and number two, that they should have this attitude. They should appreciate where they are. These players perform. If the players don't do what they do, Roger Goodell doesn't earn $44 million a year because the league isn't as popular as it is. They work hand in hand. And if Roger Goodell could complain about them, they could complain about him. Mm.
Okay, my, my final take, Carrie, before you take it away. <clears throat> I, I, I appreciate the point that Richard made, number one, about alcohol and the hypocrisy that a beer sponsor is the NFL's number one sponsor. I appreciated that very much. I'm okay with the point about you're making us play two games in five days, although I would remind Richard and Doug Baldwin they're about to get ten days off after that. You suck it up and get through this one. They'd rather get the seven. You, you get a mini, mini buy. What's that? They'd rather get the seven. Too many players are complaining about that short week. They don't want to do it. Listen to them. Well, but they don't have to do it. Yeah, they don't have to do it a whole lot. And, and obviously the NBA is fraught with back to back, back to back. It's, it's just part of the business deal. But, it, but again, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with all the other points. That's just me. Okay. All okay. Right. And I think the game should be played on Sunday and Mondays only for the NFL, not Thursdays. Gentlemen, we're just getting started.